warm morning to everyone. Thank you for coming over here. Yellari ko kuda bade ki na shubhodey guru. Tamay yellari ko dhani mar guru tamay ni ke mandiro ni ke. Kepegoda antarrashtriya vimana nirdana da terminal two na udhaan ek ne ne nerve ide. Bharat da government da pradhan mantri gada da Sri Narendra Modi ji auru adan nerve ek sidru. Adra hinda le le. Ivatu. नूतन टर्मिनल बेहतर तमेंगे हलवर विषय अद्भुत महिति हंसको नमान निर्वहणे बूर अंतर्राष्ट्रीय विमान निल नियमित मुख्य कार्य निर्वहणाधिकारी कार्यकारी निर्देशक श्री हरीमरा थैंक यू फॉर् एव्री वन फॉर् जॉनिंग ओवर हियर वि वेलकम यू आल India's Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji inaugurated Terminal 2 of the Kempe Gowda International Airport. In the background of that, today, Bangalore International Airport Limited's Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Sri Hari Mara will be detailing you out about the interesting facts and the facets related to the Terminal 2 of Kempe Gowda International Airport over here. And he was, of course, in the presence of the Governor of uh, Karnataka, uh, the Honorable Chief Minister of uh, Karnataka, uh, Union Minister Pradhan Joshi, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Somana, and so many other dignitaries. And it was an absolute pleasure to all, have all of you here. But for me, it's even greater pleasure that all of you are here today, and I have an opportunity to explain to you a little bit about what. Uh, and I have the opportunity to explain to you. What went behind uh, this terminal? What our thought process was, uh, etc. So, with your permission, can I start? <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, you know, we've been home to one of the most vibrant aviation markets in the world. You've seen the sort of growth in aviation that we have had in the last 14 years. It's been exponential, and particularly yeah. Bangalore. And I often say this: the biggest strength of Kepegoda International Airport is the fact that it's the airport of the city of Bangalore. The city is our biggest strength. It's an amazing economy. It's the capital of the startup capital of the world. It's the uh, technology capital of the country. It's the uh, uh, Silicon Valley of India and so on and so forth. And that's really what gives us the power. The fact that we are home to such a large urban migrant labor population. That's the reason why we're such an amazing uh, city and because of which we have tremendous growth. So over the last 14 years, we've seen incredible growth in aviation, and as uh, aviation grows, our responsibility is to make sure that we deliver the capacity that's required to cater to this growth. Right. So over the years, you've seen we've added various elements as far as the, uh, the capacity creation is concerned. So before we move to Terminal 2, I think it's very important to also explain to you it's not just about Terminal 2. This program that we have done is actually a capacity expansion program of the entire airport. We have to be sure that we are here ready to be able to cater to the next 10 years of growth. So as far as that is concerned, when we started in 2018, it was important first take care of the most important thing. What's the most important thing in the airport? It's the runway. So we started with the runway construction in 2018 and by December 2019, we commissioned the second runway. And all of you are aware of that. Along with that, we have also had to expand the capacity of the entire system, which meant all the utilities, power, water, uh, the, the Entire access infrastructure, you've seen the trumpet flyover, you have double the size of the trumpet flyover, you've seen the roads that lead up to the airport, it used to be 2 plus 2 lanes, we have doubled that to 5 plus 5 lanes, and so on and so forth. So, so there's work done across the campus, so that from an airport system perspective, we are ready for the next 10 years. And then of course, in the middle of all that is Terminal 2. And Terminal 2 is meant to create capacity for the next uh, few years, what we have built right now is only phase one of terminal two, that is a phase two of terminal two as well. Um, we were, when we were sitting together and thinking about what should be the concept of uh, terminal two, very simple airports are gateways to a region, they are the calling cards of a region, and very simply uh, the answer for us was that the airport has to be a reflection of the city. And luckily, we have a great city to celebrate. We are a modern, sustainable, uh, uh, city that's rooted in tradition as well. So keeping all, all that in mind, we decided to embrace 
four pillars which we thought will be great dedication to the city of Bangalore. We said T2 must be a terminal in a gun. T2 must have technology woven into it because we are the, the airport of the technology capital of the country. Uh, clearly, as a city, we are a city that balances its modernity and tradition with equal ease. And given that, we also felt that art and culture, heritage, traditions of the city, of this region of Karnataka must be celebrated. And of course, no development is complete in today's world unless it is sustainable. And sustainability also was woven into this. I'll speak of each one of this in a little bit of uh, detail. Uh, the first concept, of course, is the terminal in the garden. Now, we started, and the idea of terminal in the garden was, of course, Bangalore was always a garden city, and the airport must also be a garden airport. So that is, is a clear answer. And we felt that walking through the airport must feel like you're walking through a garden as you're traveling. And as you can see around you, uh, that's exactly, and I think Prime Minister Modi said that as well, that when you walk through this terminal, you feel like you're walking through a garden. That's what you're seeing everywhere around you. But we took this to another level. We said we must change that, not just the terminal in the garden, but we decided to create a terminal in a biodiversity hotspot. And that which meant that we must give home to a variety of plants, many species, and that's what we have done. So, uh, we have over, in the terminal alone, inside we've got over six and a half lakh plants. Six, over six lakh plants that uh, are here across multiple ecological habitats in uh, India. Uh, you will see around you that, you know, when you walk through, you've got these amazing bells and whales that hang around you. Many people ask me the question, are these real plants? And I want to show each one of you that every single one of these plants is real. And they will grow, they will continue to thrive. But the most interesting thing is that, and one might ask, what are these bells made of? How do you maintain them? How do you uh, make sure they are water? The great thing about it is that we've got an indigenous system. We've got a homegrown technological marvel that enables that we don't have to water these plants anymore. Once this bell is built, it's got its own system. There's a water reservoir at the bottom. It's got a pumping system that pumps water up and that waters the plant or plants automatically. And all this is controlled because there are sensors across the board. There's, there's humidity sensors, there's uh, room zone temperature sensors, uh, and all that is controlled using an app that has been also developed indigenously. Moving on, uh, there are over 10,000 square meters of green walks. When you walk through this, when you go past uh, towards domestic security, look at the green walks that are around you. They're beautifully developed. Our landscaping team has done a wonderful job. We've got our head of landscaping as well here, so you can interact with him as well, Prasanna Murthy. He's our vice president of landscaping. He's done a brilliant job. You can have a chat with him along the way. We've got 620 endemic species, over 7,700 trees used to line our roads. They were, um, you know, transplanted, they were taken out for the road expansion, and they, they were looked after for four years, and they've been brought back and planted where they were before. So, you know, we never lost any plants. 95% success rate as far as the, the uh, trees were concerned. And that's the, that's the way to grow, right? When you grow, trees should not die in the process. We must continue to help them survive. And from baby plants to plants, to trees that are 600 to 800 years old is what you will see on your walk through the airport. Uh, moving forward, uh, like I mentioned, indigenous technology has been used across the bell and bale system of watering, plus any else, any irrigation system that you see across, the technology has been developed indigenously. Uh, potentially, in all this greenery, we are hoping that the temperature in this area will automatically be a couple of degrees lower, which means lesser load of air on air conditioning and so on and so forth. Um, moving forward, the other important thing was that we felt that it's not just good enough to put beautiful ornamental plants here. What's the legacy that they're going to leave behind? What are they going to give to the future generations? And for that, we felt that it was important to make sure that we take rare endangered and threatened species of plants and give inside the airport a safe environment, a safe sanctuary for them to survive. So there are many plants which is, we know about endangered species of animals, but we don't hear so much about endangered species of plants. 
but there are plant species as well that are getting extinct. And we have decided to adopt about 180 of them, provide them essentially, allow them to survive, grow and develop over a period of time. Um, some highlights, I think this will be shared with you, some highlights of some of the uh, data points as far as the uh, uh, terminal and the garden concept is concerned. Uh, you, this, of course, you will see uh, much of this uh, in the information that will be shared with you, and I've also spoken about many of this, so I'll move on. Sustainability, again, is something that's very close to our heart. I don't know how many of you are aware, but the airport is already extremely uh, conscious of sustainability and has practiced this in a big way. So, for instance, we have 4,008 acre campus. Across the 4,008 acres, we use only renewable energy, 100% renewable energy, and it's one of the largest renewable energy programs in the world uh, amongst airports. Um, and from a water sustainability standpoint, we are water positive as a campus. We have a water positivity index of 1.37. Uh, and terminal 2, we felt, must also continue to reflect that ethos of uh, sustainability. So, first of all, usage of natural materials. You will see granite that comes from nearby areas, bamboo, uh, exposed brickwork, which Bangor was always famous for. Uh, the P2 has skylights. So, today is a cloudy day, but if it is not so cloudy, you will see that we don't need to switch on a single light in the entire terminal because, uh, of course, we also wanted to showcase the lighting to you, but otherwise, we do not need to switch on any light here. So all this natural light results in massive saving in uh, uh, energy as well. We use rain and harvested rainwater for water supply. We've got two ponds that have been developed in front of Terminal 2. The water that's collected in these ponds will be used in Terminal 2. We also recycle all the uh, water to ensure that that's used for landscaping, etc. Uh, we, especially in the aftermath of COVID, we've particularly paid attention to the quality of indoor air so that passengers who come into this terminal breathe fresh air. So the filtering systems that we use and so on guarantee you high quality indoor air. 24.9% uh, energy savings with solar panels and skylighting. The skylighting already told you about, but once the terminal is operationalized, we also harvest all the space on top of the roof to produce up to 7 megawatts of power that will power this terminal as well. So in that sense, it will result in 25% saving in energy. Uh, and most importantly, all of this must have a result at the end of it. it must, there must be a credibility, there must be a validation of our efforts. And I'm delighted to inform you, Terminal 2 is the first airport in Asia, the largest airport in the world, to receive a LEED Platinum certification for a new airport development. This is a really big achievement because the standards for achieving deep platinum certification by the US Green Building Council is very, very high. And we have managed to achieve that with our efforts. So with that, I'll quickly play a short video that talks about our sustainability. administers the world's largest sustainability brand, LEED. LEED creates assets which are efficient in energy, water, waste and carbon footprint. LEED also makes good business sense. The LEED certified aqua facilities across the globe are a testimony to the triple bottom line, people, planet and profits. Over 1,400 aqua projects are participating in LEED, spanning 270 million square feet. The Bangalore Airport was one of the first airports to achieve LEED by having the Terminal 1 certified in 2013. The journey continues with the Kempapara International Airport Terminal 2 getting LEED pre-certified platinum. We are happy to share the news that the Kempapara International Airport Terminal 2 is the world's largest airport to be LEED pre-certified platinum under version 4 building and construction. 
the airport had actually incorporated many salient green features, including energy efficiency, which is 21 percent more than the world standards, 30 percent more fresh air than the world indoor air quality standards, 100 percent rainwater runoff, 20 percent open space, and many more. The Capricorn International Airport also planned to bring their interiors and the lead, which will enhance the health and well-being of the passengers and staff. We will continue our partnership and move the Kempogoda International Airports towards the goals of decarbonization and net zero. Thank you. So, starting with design, every element, so design, construction, and operations across the board, we have made very special effort to ensure that judicious use of technology, cutting edge technology, is used. So, for instance, uh, this airport will be fitted out with the Vijayatra travel program. Many of you might be familiar with it. It's the government of India's biometric travel program. So, which means that through Terminal 2, you could use, you could travel using biometrics. All the leading technology in the world, as far as aviation is concerned, is incorporated. So self backdrop units, you will see some of them as you're walking through. Uh, this is where you can check in your bag uh, without uh, the assistance of uh, an airport staff or an airline staff. self backdrop. Uh, similarly, full body scanners. We have deployed full body scanners. The first time it's happened in airports in India. You must take a look at them. Very interesting. And of course, the automatic trail retrieval system from a security standpoint are also uh, installed. Um, there are almost 34 of the self bag uh, drop points. They are also connected to an inline baggage handling system, uh, which can handle up to 4,500 bags uh, per hour. Um, I mentioned to you that about the smart irrigation system. Uh, again, fantastic use of technology. It's the first airport in the world to use software-defined uh, network, which uh, Cisco has deployed for us. It is uh, an incredible achievement because this helps us to be flexible and agile beyond any other airport uh, that we know. And of course, across the airport, you will see multiple digital screens. All of it uh, can be controlled using a central uh, content management system. Content management system enables us to flexibly use these screens in any format that we want. Uh, for instance, this is just the dashboard of the irrigation system of the wells and wheels. So each one of this tells you exactly how much is the humidity set, uh, set uh, right now, what is the room zone temperature, what is the evapotranspiration rates, all of that is measured so that these guys can control it using a dashboard. Now this is, let's say, cutting edge technology from the irrigation standpoint. The airport, I mentioned saying that the airport is also uh, uh, started using technology from the design uh, stage itself. So the entire design has used BIM. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling, which means that the airport, the double the, yeah, the design of the terminal was actually created in three dimensions. It's a 3D model that was created on the basis of which the construction was done. Now, this is a great tool because this also becomes a great maintenance tool in the end. But to explain building information modeling better, I'm going to take you a short video because that will really help you understand this. The maintenance of our airport infrastructure is powered by a digital twin, allowing us to digitally navigate to any part of the airport. Here's what it looks like in use. The common utility plant delivers critical services to the terminal. The digital twin allows us to search for things we care about, like systems, equipment, or even by locations. We can view any piece of equipment and access all of its information in a couple of clicks. Searching for equipment and grouping by location has never been easy. The digital twin serves as the single source of truth with the ability to search through and filter the results as needed. Our technicians can monitor performance.
investigate anomalies and address issues with accurate data and documents delivered on a single pane of glass. Our digital twin strategy harnesses technology and process optimization to achieve highest standards of operations and our mission of making our airport one of the most advanced airports in the world. Thank you. 